the Indian chieftain Dark Horse, spoke to me, loudly. It's a bike that I rode simply for the sake of riding it, and for just how damn good it made me feel while I was doing it. Any excuse, or no excuse, and I was out and about and taking the longest way home every chance I could. I liked the way it performed, its brakes, its handling, and I liked its ornate minimalism. Yes, that's an oxymoron, but the bike is ornate and heritage styled of old indeed. It has heavily valanced guards, bathtub enclosure and a massive war bonnet headlight nacelle. But it's also unencumbered by the fairings, farkles and upper bodywork that adorn many a modern motorcycle. It's still a naked, and part of what it shouted to me was about essence and bugs in the teeth of the cheese-eating grin that worked its way across my dial every time I so much as looked at the bike. It spoke of a connection with the past, delivered in a modern tech wrapper. There is an underlying excellence in the new Indian's engineering. The technology, like the no-fuss cruise control, the self-cancelling indicators, the keyless security fob starting, and trip computers are all well integrated and don't interfere with the style. It has this switch here on the uh, left hand switch block, that one there, that cycles through. Pretty good display. Some has been paired away from the previous models of Indian Chief Classic 2. About 14 kilograms of mass and $2,000 in upfront costs to be exact. The missing 14 kilograms also provides a preview of the 2016 Classic, which will likewise be delivered without the oil cooler and the associated weight reduction that that brings. The Dark Horse has also been weighed in, sporting a solo saddle and without any passenger accommodation at all with a luggage rack where the significant other would normally fit. The weight reduction is quite noticeable in the manners of the bike when compared to previous incarnations. And as it was, the back rack provided good protection for the rear guard and bodywork as the backpack full of camera equipment I slung over my shoulder on just about every ride hung low from the weight of all the kit I was carrying. It's such a photogenic bike that I couldn't resist the challenge of trying to capture its light absorbing matte blackness by both day and night, its lines captivated me, and as such, it needed the full swag of kit. But there is more to the bike than its looks. I found chucking it around quite captivating too. And then there was listening to it. is a reasonably steep 29 degrees and the 16 inch wheels front and rear are shod with Dunlight Elite rubber, 180 section on the rear and 130 on the front. Both have quite a tall, thick profile. Hammering it, cranked over, using all of that very good cornering clearance and most of its near 140 newton meters of torque is pure delight. Side to sides are the same. The 46 millimeter cartridge forks with dual rate springs are good and I had the mechanically adjustable preload dialed most of the way up to max on the single shock rear. I didn't use all of the 94mm of travel available over the course of the test. No bottoming out or any hints of vagueness at all. For a machine weighing in at 341kg, it is light and effortless and balanced once you get your feet on the footboards, even at low speeds. And then there was listening to it. The test bike was fitted with Indian Stage 1 exhausts and fishtail extensions. Yeah. I probably would go for the black chrome finish if it was mine, but that's a matter of taste. What was beyond argument was exactly how good they sound. If you like the way the bike looks, 
then the sound from the Stage 1 fitted to the Thunderstroke 111 cube engine matches perfectly. Apart from the oil filter, the engine appears unchanged from previous models. If anything, it's just a little bit more refined. Although, even with the Stage 1 pipes fitted, it still benefits from short shifting and using the big torque hammer to hustle it along. Short shifting and it's just much more rewarding. It's a beautiful thing. Rather than tapping it out looking for peak horsepower. A heavy breather like that that's fitted to our running bull project bike might be the order of the day here too. But overall, a $26,995 ride away, the Dark Horse hits a spot in the market that will make for a great start for a custom project or one that you can just ride the wheels off as is. I enjoyed the bike primarily as a cruiser and as an around town and day rider. It's narrow enough to lane split and deal with heavy traffic and the engine is tractable and relaxed enough to do it comfortably. It's also comfortable enough to spend long hours in the saddle and one of the few goodies from the Indian accessory catalogue, it has enough suspension travel and sweet handling to make a good long distance machine as well. Coupled with its great looks, it's a terrific all-rounder. Amongst the many things the bike shouted at me were style, enjoyment, aesthetic, heritage and a dose of downright cool. I found it's well worth a listen. More rewarding. It's a beautiful thing. It's just eminently cruisable. It's got this just gorgeous, torquey, strong feeling engine. Very direct feel at the throttle hand too. It's the fly-by-wire and the What's now pretty well sorted Indian fuel injection. Comfort is outstanding. It really is very comfortable. Super pull back bars, if you sit at the dinner table upright riding position, it's very, very comfortable. It's got really wide boards down there as well too, which gives you an opportunity to move your legs around. So get into a sort of sports riding type position or a relaxed feet forward type cruising position. A 